All right, that's a basic introduction. For this particular module, the main part of the module is going to be a lecture by Alexander Osterwalder, who invented this thing called the business model canvas. People have always known the various parts of a business model and how you have to think through the issues, uh, but he made quite, a, um, uh, quite an impact on the industry, and it's now kind of widely known. People actually talk about the canvas. So I wanted to just give you this as an example and I'll actually, for the most of this particular module, you'll watch a lecture of his that he gave at Stanford. Uh, he's actually a Swiss guy, I believe. But he'll, he gave a lecture at Stanford and went through his own model. So you'll see the original guy who originally invented it and how he thinks it should be worked, how it should work. And this is also something that is very useful in, in, in an exercise of starting to determine whether or not what you thought was a good idea and you think it's going to work, whether you could put all the pieces together so you effectively start to know what it is you have to do to create this entity outside of your brain, but in the real world, that can generate value for customers, for the managers and yourselves that are in the business, but also for outside investors potentially. This canvas, uh, you'll see this on his presentation as well, but you start in the center. What is the value proposition? What are you giving customers that you think they need? How do you think about that? What aspects of the value proposition? He'll also talk about the fact that you need to keep changing this all the time. It's not something that starts. That's why he wants to use post-it notes and stick them on there, because you're always adding new ideas and modifying them and improving them. In the center is the value proposition. If you go off to the right side, you see it's a lot about customers. What's the relationship you need? Is it a subscription relationship? Whatever. Customer segments. You're going after old people, young people, that sort of thing. And then what sort of channels? How do you get to your customers? How do you get your customer, how do you get information to your customers and how do you get product to your customers? You go through retail stores, do you do it online? Do you use social media with ads and social media? Do you actually put an ad in the Super Bowl? Right? So that's that right side. On the left side is kind of what you have to do to deliver that product and services. What are the activities you have to do internally? What are some of the key partners you have to work with? Maybe these are some suppliers that you have to get some of your product and service. Maybe you need to get some software developed, so you might have a partner that does that. Um, and then in the, the smaller box in the middle is kind of what resources you need in order to achieve that objective. That all falls down to the bottom. And as you can see on the right side, where you have your customers, you have to figure out how the revenue comes in the business. So it starts to get quantitative. And on the left side, where you're talking about partners and resources and activities, that's a cost structure. So you start figuring out where that cost structure comes from. Uh, you'll see, you'll hear a lot more about this. We'll also talk about it in terms of projects uh, within the course. So that's something to be thinking about. It's also something that shows, shows people that you know what's going on in the entrepreneurial world. You know, you understand and you've worked with Canvas before. So it actually has kind of CV value or resume value, if you will, to have become familiar with this. Just to give you one sense of an area that you might not have immediate in, uh, knowledge about how different kind of partnerships evolve, you might have a joint venture with somebody where you each own a piece of the outcome. Um, you might have uh, some network connections, you know, where you have multiple locations, um, those kinds of, uh, of partnerships where you're part of a, of a group of other people that sort of serve the same need. Um, you know, like you're, you might have a building or something that you want to use Airbnb, so there's other Airbnbs that you might interact with. Um, there's consortia of groups that come together that are trying to develop a similar product or they can market their products together, but they're in different locations. You might have an alliance with somebody who, uh, perhaps if you're doing a service that businesses use to help manage their HR process, you work with some consultants or some HR companies or people that develop software for H for uh, HR software for companies like Workday and then trade associations and other potential partnerships you might have. Uh, other partners are really your suppliers or actually a type of partnership that you might want to use. So that's that's just a little bit of theory around the, the idea. This is also covered in the text, but things that you could think about whenever you start working on the partnership side of the of the story. So the next part of this module will be the entire lecture that Alexander Osterwalder uh, made at Stanford regarding his business model canvas, how he thought about it, how it should be used, all of that sort of thing. That'll be the rest of the presentation.